Hello everybody, this is Kimberly with Starfish Design Embroidery. I know I'm not in video, I'm not presentable, but one of these days I'll get a better setup where I can do that little show you myself and show you what I'm sewing, but right now I don't have that. So today we are gonna be stitching out Serendipity. We're gonna be doing the 11 inch by 7.9. It's labeled 11 by eight in the pattern, but it is uh, digitized to work for the Janome 500E. So it will fit the largest hoop in the Janome 500E. I apologize in advance, it's hard to keep in video with that hoop, but I'll do the best I can. The PDF is very detailed, you'll have no issues, but I just wanna expound on a few things in the video. So without further ado, here is Serendipity. Here's the small eight by six bag. And if you are familiar with my Flat Bottom Girl series, yes, this is very similar to it. Um, but the difference is it's got a curved bottom. So you see how it has that cute little dart looking 3D effect on the bottom. So this is the eight by six, so cute. This would be a cute little makeup bag to put in your bag. Keep in mind it is curved at the top as well. So I'm not sure this is gonna be ideal for a crossover bag or anything, but um, you make your choice. This is using the um, Fairy Shimmer from My Punk Broidery. Uh, the zipper pull is from Luke's Hardware. The D-ring is from My Punk Hardware, My Punk Broidery. Uh, the zipper is from Wizardry Stitchery and Crafts. Um, this one is the new uh, Western Azal, I think it is. So pretty. Uh, the zipper is from Indo Love Creation. Uh, D-ring is from My Punk Broidery, and the zipper pull is from Luke's Hardware. Um, so, so cute. Um, this one is a little bit bigger, so you see how the bottom has a little bit more detailed 3D look to it. It is supposed to look like this. So this is what it's supposed to look like. Um, I hope you like it. I think it's fun and it's all made in the embroidery hoop. It's actually 13 quick stitches. The video takes a lot longer because I have to explain everything to you, but really it's a very quick sew. Um, and this is a thicker vinyl and my machine made it through on a 9014 needle. I was worried it wouldn't, but it did. Um, I do have um, placement stitches to put crossbody straps at the top. I'm not so sure this would work for a crossbody, but it's your bag. You do it, what you want with it. Um, and you see you do lose a little bit of height because of the gusset at the bottom. But look how much room then you get inside. It's not a flat bag. There's a lot of room inside. This is gonna be a great makeup bag. Um, I would have used uh, the waterproof canvas, but in my machine, it's just too thick. But there you go. So this is Serendipity. It should be available today. It's Sunday the uh, 24th should be available in a couple of days um, if you see this video before it's released. I will put a link down below with all the supplies I've used as well as the link to the pattern and let's get started. Okay let's get started. I've gone ahead and stitched out the placement line and I am doing the big bag this time so it might be a little hard to see all the steps. Um, I'll try and keep as much in video as I can <clears throat> but I'm just letting you know in advance. So um, these are our zipper placement lines. This is its top zipper. Oh, my stitching came out there. That's okay. We can still see it to line up. This line right here, this I only added um, so that if you wanted to add embroidery to the bag um, in your software, you know where to stop the embroidery. You'd want it centered in here because we're going to have pleats. It's going to be a little gusset and that's going to kind of fold under the sides and you don't want your embroidery to get cut off. So if you keep it between this line and that line, but that's the whole purpose of this placement line, is just if you want to bring this file into your embroidery software and do your own file or do your own embroidery ad, you can do that. Um, this is actually a relatively quick stitch out. It's not a lot involved, um, just creating the pleats. Um, I do want, there I am saying um all the time, I apologize. I do want to stress the importance of knowing how much your machine can handle because um, here's the materials we're going to be using. I have two regular cotton um, materials, um, not not interfaced, and then I'm using this uh, Western from My Punk Broidery. It's not the thinnest vinyl, so I'm actually a little going to be holding my breath that it works. Um, but I do have a 9014 needle in minimum 9014 needle for this style bag. So what's gonna happen is we're gonna create a pleat um, at the bottom of the bag like this. 
and that's what we're gonna be stitching through at the end. So at the end of the bag, when we're all done, the last seams are gonna be stitching through this thickness of material. So that's one, two, three, four layers of vinyl folded on top of each other, and then two layers of cotton. So it doesn't look that thick right there, but it really is. So you need to know the limits of your machine. I cannot stress that enough. I feel like my machine can handle this. I might have to bump it up and put a 100 needle in it. We're gonna find out. Um, and then I do have a little trick at the end to try and help um, coax your presser foot. So anyway, this is a large piece of material here. This is 12 inch by 19 inches. So the other thing is be aware that you cannot use a directional fabric for this bag because it's all one piece. So the this piece will become the back and it'll be upside down. So that's one thing to keep in mind, no directional fabric. So the materials you'll need, you can actually use um, tearaway um, stabilizer. Normally we use poly mesh fusible or no, no show poly mesh, non fusible is what I prefer in my bags because it stays soft and it has enough, uh, it's a cutaway. It stays soft and it has enough strength for the bag, but doesn't give that crinkly sound. But in this bag, you will actually be able to tear out all of the stabilizer. So if you wanna use your favorite medium tearaway, go at it. I don't actually have a tearaway to fit this hoop. Um, I do, I have a, I think it's 804 from um, Pelon, but I find that's actually too strong. It's great for like detailed embroidery, but I find it can tear out my stitches, even a bean stitch on the edges. So I'm not a fan of it for my bags. I do have a scrap piece of World of Widener tearaway. You will need a scrap piece that is the width of your design, um, and about three to four inches. Um, that will be very helpful for the last two steps. And you'll see why when we get there. So I have a piece of um, scrap tearaway. No, this is not a time to try and substitute um, the water soluble topper. No, 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 no. That's not gonna give strength and you'll see in the end why. So then we also need our zipper and you can use either a number three zipper, which is your standard zipper that you buy at Joann's. Um, this style zipper, zipper, or you can use the number five zipper. It is digitized to support both of them and I'll show you how in just a moment. So let me actually put my zipper pull on. So I'm using zipper by the yard. This one is from Indo Love Creations. It's, I hope it'll look okay. I didn't really have a, a good color that I thought with this vinyl. Um, so, but this one actually is the same tone. So hopefully it'll work. So I just need to put the zipper pull on it. And um, I'm not showing you how to do that. Lots of videos on how to do that. Zipper poles are scary for good reason. They are very tricky. Um, I used the fork method for a long time. And then I finally got the hang of doing it without using the fork. And um, now I can usually do it. I, what I do is I get it started here. I, every once in a while I can actually do it and push it on here and get started. But usually what I do is I just get it started and then I lay it down on the surface hold the two sides with my fingers and then slide it on. And usually that works for me. I don't know if this is the right type of zipper pole. I'm actually, I think this might be the wrong zipper pole. Is this a zipper pole for my other style zipper? Oh, doesn't say on the bag, but I'm wondering if it is. Oh no, there it is. I have the other kind of reversible zipper. Okay, there it goes. So this is from um, Luke's Hardware, the zipper pull is. And the way I know that is she keeps all the the shiny stuff on, the protective tape on hers to keep it from getting scratched. Because the, the process of coating this, it is a chemical process that adheres the, it makes a chemical reaction, but it's still a coating. And so it can, especially on the lower end um, zipper hardware, it can scratch. Okay. So back to the bag. So if you're gonna use a number three zipper, the important thing is you wanna make sure that you keep your hardware bits out of your stitch path. And you can see this zipper is actually gonna be not as wide as the bag. The top is gonna to curve in on both sides. So you'll see that the zipper, this zipper's not long enough, obviously. 
but if this was your zipper, you'd want it long enough so that this metal bit is gonna be out of the stitch area over here. So I recommend that you leave an inch on either side. So an inch on this side and an inch on this side so you can move the pole out of the way. So whatever the zipper is, you wanna make sure that it's gonna cover both sides of that. And with the number three zipper, you can actually just most of them. If you get a custom zipper tape, I have found some custom zipper tapes that are slightly wider than one inch or slightly less than one inch. But in general, it's gonna be one inch and you're just gonna center the zipper teeth. This is the top line, this is the middle, and this is the third. You're gonna center the zipper, te zipper tape right in between those lines. This line, this line, and this line. So this is the top zipper. So the top of the die line is always gonna be the top of your zipper. And you'll see how that fits in there nice and snug. If you're concerned and it's not evenly fitting in there, then you'll just do the same thing we're gonna do with the number five, and you're gonna match up the back of the open zipper teeth area with the center placement line. And that's what we're gonna do. So I have my hoop all twisted around now, and I am on a Janome 500E, but the reason why is I always like to start my zipper on the right side of the zipper and tape down this raw edge bit. And I do recommend that you use a lighter and singe off your end of your zipper, but I'm not seeing my lighter right now, so I can't do that. All right. Um, so what I like to do is I start on the right-hand side, the upper right, and then what I do is I get that centered first and tape it down, and that way it's anchored, and I know this end is straight. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna line up the center, oh, and I'm not there. This is the center zipper line. You're gonna line that up with the center of your zipper tape. And that's where the opening is behind the teeth. Now on some tapes, it's easier to see than others. Um, if you have a white tape and it's hard to see, what I have actually done is I've gone in and just used a pencil and like lightly drawn on it and marked it so I could see it better. Okay, so but now this side is anchored, so I know it's good. So now we go ahead and move our hoop around, and now we're gonna be looking at it from the left hand side. And I grab lots of pieces of tape. This is the time when I like the half inch transport tape because I can get it right on the edges and hopefully my needle won't go through it. And then what I do is I start at the end and I go a couple of inches at a time and I just line up the center line of the tape with the center line of my placement and I put a little piece of tape on the bottom. And then I roll it down or walk it down, this all the way down, taping every couple of inches do not pull too tightly. You want your zipper to just lay down. You don't want to be pulling on it and making it taut. If you do that, that's how you're going to get ripples later on. The benefit of an in-hoop bag is the machine does all the stitching for you for the zipper, so everything should be straight. You should never have a ripply zipper on an in-the-hoop bag. If you do, that tells me you pulled your zipper tape too tight. You don't want to pull it. You just want to let it lay down. Just relax it and let it roll right down. Or if you're just doing a number three, just let it lay straight down. And then I just tape it along. There should be no um, tautness in your zipper tape. It should just be laying there loosey-goosey. And then I go all the way to the end. And I try to put the tape on the edge as much as I can. And then I like to tape the zipper pull down so it doesn't bounce around. And potentially, if you went really short with this, um, it could get stuck in your bag and it get hit by the presser foot. Okay, so then I go back after I get the bottom part of the zipper, I go back and I do a few pieces on the top. If you don't tape the top, then there's a potential from the vibrations of your machine as the presser foot comes around, it's gonna get loose and then you might get a pleat. And I use a lot of tape because I don't want my fingers anywhere near this machine when it's going 800 stitches per minute. That's what I usually run my machine at. Um, that needle will go right through your finger. And one time I did, and Grayson reminded me, my son, of this. he actually remembers. And it's been a few years. And I did it on my six needle machine. And the needle went right through my finger like this. I'm very lucky it didn't break. 
and it missed my nail bed, but it went right through my finger. Oh my gosh, that hurts so bad. So I keep my fingers away from the machine. Okay, so let's move my material out of the way. One more thing I wanted to point out. Some of the um, lining pieces are gonna be pretty similar in size. Like this one is 11 and a half, 12 inches by 11 and a half inches. So when I go to place it, it's important that it matches. So what I did is I went ahead and put a little with a, um, in the seam allowance with the, um, the friction pen, I put a little arrow so I know that this is the horizontal direction. That's helpful for you to do if you um, have a size panel that is similar in size, the width and the height. But that's the second panel, so we don't need that yet. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and run our tack down. And that's simply going to be um, stitching down the zipper to the stabilizer. Oops. Okay, I'm gonna fix my thread and run the tack down for that and I'll be right back. Okay, so now we've stitched down our zipper and go ahead and save these pieces of tape. I usually find I can get about three uses out of them depending on the vinyl I'm using. So that's, you'll so, see some of my videos. I have tape all over the top of my machine. And then periodically when I do my oiling on my machine, I do my deep cleaning too. And um, get all the tape residue off. Obviously my hoops could use a good cleaning. Okay, so now this is all secured down. This is also a good opportunity to look and make sure that the stitches look even, that you didn't get your zipper lopsy days ago or anything. This should be relatively evenly displaced or displaced between the zipper in the middle and this line. That is why you can use any zipper with my bags. Um, with a number five zipper, you're gonna have a little bit less reveal of the zipper tape than with a number three because the number five zipper has the zipper teeth are five millimeter wide versus the number three zipper, which is three millimeter wide. One thing to note on these custom zippers with these nylon coils, they are a little bit taller, so they do look thicker than a similar zipper you'd buy at the store. But you can see here how much difference the width is of those teeth. And because I don't focus it on this width of the tape, I focus it on the width of from here to here and I make sure you have enough room for your presser foot to get on either side and still be a secure zipper. My zippers are very secure, they get stitched down twice. Okay, so now we're ready to do our first lining panel. And before we go on, uh, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, another thing to do, you can do this now or later, but if you have a ruler, it's helpful, and I presumably forgot to do it. But fortunately, there's a centering mark down here in the bottom too. But it's helpful to go ahead and, I am um, apologize, I forgot to highlight this to you, but there's a tick mark. You see it, um, let me see if I can pull this up and show it to you. There is a tick mark right there. Extend that tick mark out, that's your centering mark. It's to help you lay your material down, but you can free, free it like this. But the other thing will be helpful is um, on the back of the hoop to extend out, use your ruler and extend out this, uh, oh, you know, this bag doesn't matter. Sorry, you don't need to extend it out on this one. I'm thinking of another bag, got myself confused. <laughs> Just extend out this um, centering mark so you can make sure your materials are centered. That's the purpose of that. Okay, so we're gonna flip over. So I'm on the Janome. So on the Janome, at least on the 500 and the 500E and the 10,000, they just came out with a brand new car, AKA new embroidery sewing machine that cost $23,000. Not gonna lie, if I had the disposable cash, that baby would be sitting on this table right now. But I don't have the disposable cash for $23,000. I'm dying to see it in person. I'm hoping one of my local stores will get it and I can go check it out, but it looks beautiful from the videos. But I digress. So on my Denomi, the hoop attachment is on the right-hand side. Most embroidery machines and the new one, the hoop attachment is on the left-hand side because it's um, configured in a way that you can remove the arm 
to do your sewing. So for my designs, I generally save them so that the zipper is on the right hand side, except for the Janome files. The Jeff files, I flip them and save them on here. Because if you have a Janome 500 or 550E, you know we cannot rotate the design on our machine. If this design, which is 11 inches tall by, well, it's 11 inches wide by 7.9 inches tall. I made this one specifically for this file. Um, if I had loaded this horizontal in landscape more mode so the 11 inches was the width, my machine wouldn't read it because it's wider than the maximum field area for the machine to read of 7.9 inches. And the machine is not intelligent enough to say, oh, it's too wide at 11 inches to do landscape. Maybe if I rotate it and put it in portrait mode, it'll fit. It's not smart enough to do that, unfortunately. Um, so I save my files this way. Um, my earlier files, I didn't do that because I wasn't testing on a Janome. Um, I was testing on my brother's six needle machine. So when I moved to the Janome, I started doing that. So if you ever run into an issue with one of my earlier files and you don't have software and you just need it rotated, just send me a message, I'll do it for you. So anyway, um, also shout out, very important to invest in embroidery software. I'm not gonna give you any names, there's lots of them out there. I use one in particular because I have a Mac and it's the only one that runs native on Mac. Um, so that's why I have it, but you should consider that as part of your investment is a sewing machine, or I'm sorry, embroidery software so that you can rotate, merge designs and all of that. It's crucial to have it. Okay, back to the bag. Okay, so I'm gonna grab my shorter piano that's 12 inches wide of my lining. And what we're gonna do, and if you are using a directional lining, because it's actually in two pieces, so you could, you would lay it so that this actually looks like it's directional, but it's really not. You would lay it so it's going in the right direction and then just flip it up like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to line this up um, with the, uh, and what I like to do is I just, if I need it to be centered, not it's not always needed. You would just fold it like in half, like with the wrong edges together and mark it, make sure that that, the halfway mark is covering your tick mark there. And then make it even with the bottom of the zipper. Either way, whether you're using the number three or the number five, it doesn't matter. The number five zipper, you'll just have a little bit thicker seam allowance. And then tape it down. Now with these longer um, bags, when you're doing the lining, I like to put another piece of tape in the middle because if you don't, what happens, the vibrations of the machine, it might pull the lining like that while you're stitching. And we don't want that. So on the longer ones, I like to pad that tape in the center as well. So it just will help keep it from moving. Then just hold this um, lining with your hand as you flip your hoop over. And that way it'll help keep it flat. If you feel more comfortable, you can actually go ahead and roll this up and pin it to keep it out of the way, but I don't need to worry about that. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that. Now you're ready for your big old panel, your exterior. And if it gets into the way of your hoop attachment, you can just either fan fold it or roll it up until you need that other section just to keep it out of your way. So something like this and put a, a clip in the end or whatever like that, and then I'll keep it out of your hoop attachment area. But I have enough room, I can just kind of float mine on there. Again, we're not using directional material, so you can just flip it over. And then again, we wanna just center it. I'm gonna eyeball it, but if you need to, fold it in half, just like we did before, and lay it down. And I try to give you a generous enough cutting, um, cutting directions so as to not waste material, but at the same time not risk not having enough if you don't get it centered right. If you are more comfortable with doing in the hoop bags, you can see right here, I'm gonna be losing like a half an inch of vinyl. I could have cut this a half an inch less wide and it would have been fine. So you're, you're welcome to make those adjustments as you need to. So now what we're gonna do is run step three, which is just gonna tack this down and then we're gonna 
fold it over and we'll top stitch it. So as you're positioning your hoop, make sure, check under here that your lining didn't come undone. Make sure that your exterior is still flat and then go ahead and run step three. I think my machine needs service because it started off a little bit jagged, jag, jagged there. And um, I've noticed that when it's doing the top stitching too, it's a little bit off. Oh, and it's really close to the zipper teeth. And I did get this crooked, even though I taped it down. You see how that's crooked? So I'm actually gonna rip that out and redo it, and I'll be right back. Okay, that's much better. Make sure I'm not zoomed in too much. All right, so now it's nice and straight. So I just flipped the uh, edge that I went through to the other end, because that'll get caught up in the seam allowance. Although this vinyl, I think, will hide the holes because of the texture of it. So flip over to the back now, carefully, because you have a lot of weight here with the vinyl. If you're using cotton, it's probably not as crucial. Remove the tape. Don't forget this one here in the center. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna fold down our lining panel and we're gonna gently finger press the seam here so that it makes sure it doesn't get stuck into our um, final seam, our zipper. And if you notice here, mine is a little bit too wide for my hoop attachment. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna kind of fold this back and I wanna, we need this to be a half an inch past the, um, this line, that's our bottom seam. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna draw and extend this line one half inch below so I know where to line up my second panel as well. And then I can trim this down. So I'm lining up my ruler here on this bottom placement line. And then I'm gonna extend the line out over here to the edge of the hoop. And that way I'll know where to line up my second lining panel. So I just extended it out a half an inch beyond that. And then I'm gonna go ahead and lay my lining down and just loosely trim off my excess. So I need it to be underneath that line but not engaging in my hoop attachment. And I think that's because I cut this a little bit long because I have the salvage on there and I forgot to trim off the salvage. But again, going back to, I try to give you a little bit extra cutting. Okay, so now we can go ahead and tape down our corners and you wanna try and tape this lining down as tautly as you can so you get a clean finish. And we are gonna pull this lining up here in a second. So don't put too much tape on it. I usually do the middle and then each corner. And then when we do the final lining, because we're gonna go through and do a top stitch now. So you don't want this to be um, loose up here, else you're gonna get um, a bolt burp in your lining that might get stuck in your seam allowance or your zipper. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same thing here. I already removed the tape, so we're gonna fold this down. And this is when having a boning tool is very helpful. I have this little four-in-one device, not a sponsor. She's not, I'm not sponsoring her, just a happy customer. This is the Alex Anderson four-in-one tool. One end is a stiletto, one end is a seam ripper, and then it has this little dry iron here and this little pointing thing to help get corners out. So I, you can use this to just smooth down your vinyl and give it a little bit of a crease. This vinyl, I will tell you from experience, is a little bit more rigid and doesn't want to smooth down. So that's why I'm going to put some tape down at the top really good. I'm actually going to use my one inch tape to hold it down really well. And then you can kind of coax it with your stiletto as your seam, as it's stitching across the top, if it looks like it's gonna come loose. Just go ahead and put some good tape down on the edges. And you know, this is taking the extremes of my hoops, so. 
I usually like to do the video with the smaller bags just so it's easier to get it all in. But I really wanted to test with this vinyl because I think it's going to make a great makeup bag. Okay, now again, I'm going to just roll this, loosely roll this, so I can get to my hoop attachment. And then as it's seaming down here, I'm going to go ahead and keep my hand out of the stitch area and just kind of put a little bit of pressure on the vinyl just so right here, I don't want to put tape there, but the, it's going to try and go up like this with the motion of the machine. So we're up to step four, which is the top stitching. And make sure your lining didn't come loose on the bottom. And then we're going to go ahead and start it. Keep your hands out of the way. And then you can just apply a little bit on the um, excess if you need to. And if it looks like it's getting a little bit loose here, then just go ahead and pull this out and smooth it. And this is a time when using this part of your device is helpful. So you can keep this, your fingers out of here, and kind of help coax the material down. But don't put any pressure on the hoop because you don't want your stitches to get jaded. And my machine, I really think maybe needs uh, a servicing because um, this is a bean stitch, which is a three stitch and a triple stitch. And it kind of gets a little jaded when it's going down. So, um, I don't know. All right, so I got my lining on here. Move that out of the way. Okay. So now I'm gonna move this hoop attachment out of the way for a second so I can show you better without that in my way. Oh, and I lied, we're not lifting the lining up again. Okay, so this is the time where you would, if you so desire, add additional, any kind of additional embroidery. You would pull up the lining on the back, do your embroidery, and then put the lining back. Okay, and then remember to make sure your embroidery doesn't go beyond that line. It's not too bad, but it's not great either. Okay, now we're gonna carefully flip this over, and now we wanna lay down our second lining panel. And I'm gonna look for that little arrow I did, make sure I have it positioned right. And it, actually, you can tell by the width as well. And I want, remember I wanted a half an inch below the die line. So we drew our half inch, so this line, this this should come just to that half inch mark. If you go a little bit lower than that, it's fine, but don't go too far past it because you might not have enough material. So then go ahead and tape this down and tape it up here as well because we don't want it to come loose. So I've taped it right here and right here, and then I'm gonna flip this over so I can access it from over here and your side edges should all be lined up nice and neat if you cut everything correctly. And I'm gonna put one piece right here. Actually, I'll just move this piece because I don't want this to come up from the, the, oh, that one's gonna not work. Sometimes you can tell it'll, it's not tacky enough anymore, and if it's not tacky enough, then it might come up on you underneath your hoop while you're working, and you don't want that. Okay, so now everything is tacked down well. So we're gonna flip this over carefully, and we're gonna make sure as we flip this, we want our exterior to be up here out of the way. And step five is gonna do our seam for our, um, let me put my hoop back in the right way. The seam for our lining is going to stitch here and here and leave an opening in the middle to turn the bag later. One thing if you have this machine and you're new to it, if, you, if you're not new to it, you already know, when it tries to do the um, motions to move to the next step, that presser foot goes all over the place. I don't seem to have any rhyme or reason to when it, why it does what it does. 
So just be aware of that and make sure you don't have any hardware or anything in your way. So now all we're gonna do is just roll our exterior back down, leave the lining as it is on the back, and then we're gonna run our first pleat marker. And what this is doing is establishing the bottom of the pleat so we have something to fold against. Okay, now we need to go ahead and fold. We don't need to touch the lining at this point because it's already positioned here because of the seam we just made. So we don't need to fold the lining up, it's already in that position. So we just need to fold this again up. So if you notice here, here's the bottom of the pleat marker, and then there's one over there. And you wanna be gentle because um, I find that sometimes these stitches are easier to pull out when you're using a heavy vinyl. So don't be too hard on it. And in fact, it should actually come even with your original placement line. So I'm going to make sure my sides are lined up as well. And then I'm going to put a big piece of tape down here to hold that in place. That wasn't a big piece of tape. And you see this is actually much faster if I wasn't talking. You could whip these out really quickly if you're not talking like I am and explaining things. Try and keep the edges even as you fold it up. But you see here already that we have this bulky bottom. And you could go ahead and, as we did before, you could use your pressing device and try and smooth that down a little bit. bottom one is fine to do this with but don't do this with the middle pleat or she'll have a weird bump on your bottom of your bag okay now let's gently put this back into position make sure you don't have the lining coming undone make sure your hoop attachment is on properly and I think I pushed my machine I don't want to do that okay and then I'm gonna kind of coax it up here um, to help hold it because the tape is not enough. You may not need to worry about that. It depends on how rigid the vinyl is you're using. Okay, so now we're gonna run step seven, which is gonna do our second pleat. And on this one, the top of the pleat is the most important, not the bottom. And see, here's where, this is where you might, I might have gotten into an issue. If your hoop attachment had tried to come off this to move over here, then it might have bumped into this and pushed it up. So you always have to pay attention to how your machine works and make sure that doesn't happen. In that case, you could have just taped this down with a big piece of tape or do what we're gonna do at the end with adding the, um, the uh, tear away. Okay, so now we're ready to do the fold for the third pleat. And again, I'm gonna move my hoop out of the way so you can see better. I'm sorry, move my arm out of the way. Okay, so I'm gonna move this tape off here. And we'll go to the back first. So now it's time for us to do the lining. And one thing you're gonna notice right away when we fold this lining down it's gonna be in the way of our hoop attachment. So you wanna fold it down at that pleat, and you see it's harder to see on the lining. There's a tiny little leg here. It goes inwards. I could do an inward one, this, because of the shape of the bag. Um, on the regular flat bottom girls, that leg goes out, and that helps to fold against it. My first couple, I, I just had a straight line and I found it wasn't good enough. Okay, so now I'm gonna lightly finger press the center just to make sure it's even. And again, making sure these edges are lined up evenly. 
and then we're going to go ahead and put the tape down. Again, this is 3M tape by Transports Medical Tape. We're just going to do that to hold these down on the sides. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to lightly roll up this into like a little cinnamon roll. And what we're going to do is we already know where our seam allowance is going to end. So we know if we keep this attachment or this roll underneath the seam allowance right there. Ah, I need to clean my workstation off. This is too big of a piece. So if we keep it underneath here, then we know it's not going to get caught in our stitching. So just scrunch it up and put a piece of tape there to hold it in place. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And we just don't want it to get caught in our um, pleat. And when you lay it down, I hold my hand like this and hold it onto it so that I can make sure that it's going um, underneath the hoop attachment. Or I'm sorry, underneath. It's not coming undone. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and put my hoop arm, my embroidery arm back into my place. Okay, and now we're going to do the same thing on the top. We're going to cut away our little strings first. And this is where you don't want to do a really thick crease. Because if you do, it's going to show up in your bag at the end. And it won't look right. So I'm getting this positioned under my arm because I don't have a good work surface here. But if you have a, a, a counter to go to or something like that, it would be better. So you feel the pleat here. If you pull too hard, you it'll come undone. So just press against that pleat marker and again you're going to make sure your edges are even and then just slightly press it in the middle and then we're going to put a big piece of tape here so I'm making sure that this is even going up here and then I can feel the pleat right there where the thread stuck I don't want it to pull out so I'm just gently pushing it against there or pulling it against there and I'm going to tape this to the hoop and then I'll do the same thing over here. It's kind of hard to show you. Be very careful because you don't want to unhoop your project. So I can feel the thread is right there. And then I can see that it's lined up evenly. And I'm going to tape this in place. And then just kind of gently, don't, don't finger crease this pleat. Just kind of gently line it up out of the way. Okay, make sure your bottom didn't come undone when you just moved that, if you moved it. Again, I'm doing the big bag here for my machine, so it's a little bit more cumbersome. Times like this, that we're doing this on the six needle would be better. But the problem is my six needle can go through anything. So when I was testing on that, it didn't give me a good sense of how you know, how reliable my designs were to test, to stitch out. So people were having issues with them if they were using a single needle. So now I primarily test on this Janome single needle machine because I know if it stitches well on here, it should stitch well on anything. Okay, so now we're ready to do the third pleat marker and it's gonna stitch here and I'm actually gonna put a piece of tape. I remember now, um, it may go off the top of the of the vinyl so if you line up the top stitching I'm just gonna put this tape like right here because it may come off of here and I don't want it to get stuck on the seam so this is just the pleat marker so the tape is fine and I'm gonna be very careful and watch it might try to come across here and get stuck um, on there so this I think I'll just put my tear away here as well Let's see. Actually, I'm just going to use a big piece of tape. 
because I don't know if I have any more tear away for the final stitch. Because my machine, when it goes to move across the hoop, I don't want it to get stuck in this pleat. So I'm gonna tape this down really well. And you can kind of just watch it as well and stop it if you think it's going to. So I'm gonna let you see this so you can see what I'm talking about. Normally I would stop and not watch, let you watch the stitching, but just to be safe. Okay, so now it's gonna try and come across here. Oh, this time it went this way. So I got lucky. <laughs> Other times it goes that way. Again, I haven't figured out the rhyme or reason on it. Okay, now it's gonna position for doing the D-ring strap connectors. So I'm gonna go ahead and run step nine. I'm sorry, that was step eight. I'm gonna run step nine now and let it run the D-ring strap connector markings. And then we'll talk about those. I give you four of them, but I'm only gonna use one in this case. Um, I'm not sure if this bag would be ideal for a crossbody bag. Um, I see it more like a makeup bag. But I'll let you decide, because it's your bag. And these are my suggested placements. If you want to wait and do yours at the end when you do the final seams, that's fine. It's your bag. Okay, so if you see, there's a line of stitching right here, right here, right here, and right here. So what I want to point out, though, is you can already see based on the shape, the final seam is going to come in about one eighth inch in from here. So you, if you're gonna put a D-ring strap connector over here, you need to make sure your foot is gonna have enough room to get past that because it's gonna start up here and it's gonna come down like this. Can you see that? Start up here, see where the end of this is? It's gonna start up here and come down like this. So you need to make sure you have enough room there. So, what did I do with my D-ring? Did I just lose my D-ring? Kimberly, Kimberly, Kimberly. There it is. So all I did, I should have top stitched this, but I, I was running out of time. I just took a three inch um, piece of cotton, fold it in half and fold it in half again. I would recommend that you do top stitch it though. Um, but, and then I'm gonna fold it in half like so. And then I'm gonna place it in I'm gonna make it so it's parallel with my top stitching. And I want it in enough so that when that presser foot comes down, I have enough room for it to get by here. So I'm gonna go a little bit longer. So this is gonna be a little bit longer of a um, strap connector than normal because I'm gonna do the uh, cosmetic bag style. I just want one little strap. Okay, so then go ahead and put it back on here. And now this is, um, if you are on a Janome, I wanna show you what happens. Um, I did buy this new foot, but I haven't put it on and played with it yet. And I did realize that the shape of the foot is, this is a little circle, this is oblong. It You do have to be careful, I found out, what's the field size of your design because you need more room for the presser foot on the side. So I didn't put it on here because I don't think it'll work here. And here's the part number. But this is an, a convertible free motion quilting foot and it allows you to raise the presser foot up. And you'll see what I mean here. I'm actually not gonna sti sti stitch these next stitches. It's a waste of thread. So I'm just gonna fast forward my machine. Okay, so what I do on my machine if you see, our presser foot is right here right now. Let me see if I can zoom you in a little bit. I'll 
but they get too, too blurry. Okay, so here's where the presser foot is. If you reach behind, again, this is on the Janumi 500E. If you reach behind, you can push that lever and you can push it up and you get a whole, I think it's maybe a quarter inch. Let's see. So, right now, the presser foot is, see, it's a quarter inch between a quarter inch and three eighths inch. If I raise it up here, it goes up to five eighths inch, between five eighths and three quarters. So you get almost a quarter inch more of height. So what I do is, as soon as I hear the thread cutter finish, I come back here, keep my hand away from the needle and just push this up as the machine moves to the next place. It'll keep moving and then I let it back down. So that's what I'm gonna do. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and leave it zoomed in so you can see that, okay? Put the presser foot down. So get ready, hear it? That's the cutter. And see, if I had not done that, it would have hit this D-ring, and then it would have got stuck. Okay, so let's zoom back out. All right, so now we're getting to the fun stuff. That was step 11, and I'm gonna go ahead and zoom. Oh wait, sorry. That was step 10. Now we're up to step 11, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the tape here. And so now this is when we're ready to um, do our top stitching of our bag, the stitching on the top of our bag. Okay, so what we're gonna do is on the back first, and you see we didn't get, our, our lining did not get caught in that. We do need to remove the, uh, the um, stabilizer behind our zipper. So I get my seam ripper out, and this is how I do it, do it your favorite method. I actually just kind of get my seam ripper underneath. I'm not, not sure if I can hold this up and show you, but I get it underneath the stabilizer just so I can see the blade underneath it. And then I just kind of slide it across and it'll stay right to the edge of your cotton and it will not cut it. Then I do the same thing on the other side. So I flip this around and normally you would have a um, material up here but since we haven't added this yet, we can actually go a little higher up and just cut across the tack down line, all the way across. Now, when I do the corners, I do like to use the scissors for that. Scissors, did I say that right? Scissors. Um, I don't say it right. I remember now, I got teased in school about that. I can't say that word right, apparently. Okay, so then I like to use the scissors because I have a few times cut into my material. Okay, so now go ahead and remove all the tape down here, holding your lining, and we're ready to roll our lining up and tape it into place. So it's gonna be, um, it may go above your zipper, so what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that the fold of your lining is along that seam. So it should stop at that pleat marker, but I think my um, pleat, I may have pulled it too hard. So it should actually just fold along your seam and then just finger press, press, press that. So it's okay if it goes beyond the zipper. And then we wanna tape the corners in place. So we don't want them to come loose. So again, we want to be even down here with your seam. Okay, and we're not gonna move our zipper pull yet. I divided this into two steps because when I tested with the vinyl, it was really thick and kind of hard to move the zipper pull. So we're gonna do half of the seam first and then we're gonna move the zipper pull. So let's move this tape out. Oops. Get rid of all this tape down here. Don't throw these pieces away. 
because they're big and we only used a little bit, but we don't want that tape in our bag right now. Make sure you trim any little threads as you go along because if they get stuck in your seam, you won't be able to get them out and it'll drive you crazy. One thing to note, if you're using um, standard embroidery thread, it's usually polyester and you can actually just use a lighter and light it. Ooh, this left a little sticky residue. So beware of that. I normally try not to use this where um, outside the seam areas for that reason. But I didn't have another piece of tearaway handy. So you see how this automatically comes up because the tape was holding it down. Okay, make sure your D-ring strap connector didn't flip off. So you can put a little piece of tape on that and hold it down if you want. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and fold our um, exterior up. And just like we did on the lining, we wanna make sure that it's even with that die line. So you have a pleat marker that should have held it in place, but just in case it came loose, you wanna make sure it's even with your die line earlier. And then tape it, reuse these big pieces of tape. And again, make sure the edges are lined up. If you cut everything properly, it all should be lined up. And this is really thick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reuse those pieces of tape and I'm gonna put them down here. Well, I was gonna reuse them. I think I just mucked, oh, there it is. I'm gonna put them down here to try and hold this down. because it's really thick. We're gonna use our little tear away, but it's still really thick. So I'm not sure if my needle's gonna make it through this, y'all. It might break. We're gonna find out. Okay. Oops, well, there goes that. Okay, so now just make sure it's nice and taut on the sides and tape it down on both sides. And it's gonna start on the right-hand side of the bag and it's gonna stitch over to the uh, middle and then we'll move our zipper pull and then we'll do the rest Okay, so we are up to step 12 now I know this is boring watching it, but I want you to be able to see how the stitching actually happens. Okay, now go ahead and carefully um, undo the tape on your zipper pull. I have accidentally pulled my zipper pull off before doing this. And now you wanna go ahead and push the zipper pull over past that stitching. So, um, Go ahead and lift up the edges and get it as much in there as you can. And then I usually find using the seam ripper, using the seam ripper to push that little um, pull through will help get it past that mark. And you just want to get it past the presser foot area. So mine's right there. So the presser foot's going to start over here. So it should be out of the way. And we're going to finish the seam with step 12. All right, now we're ready for the hard part. Okay, this is my hold my breath part. So we're up to step 13, which is actually our final step. So we're gonna go ahead and put our tear away in place now. And what's gonna happen is we're gonna stitch, we're gonna start here. It's gonna come down here and curve around and then come back up and finish there. Then it's gonna carry over to the right-hand side and do the same thing. 
So this is the point where you want to be very careful and watch your machine. And I don't know if it's going to make it through this thickness. So we're going to find out. So I'm going to put my tear away there. So it's going to stitch onto there and you can tape it down if you want. And that'll help keep the presser foot from getting stuck in those pleats. And having your little device here is helpful. Oops. That's why it's helpful. <laughs> I should have taped it down. I'm going to back that stitches up a few. Okay. back down here but I don't want it to get stuck on this stabilizer and poke up there so I'm going to keep an eye on with it it's going to come to the outside but just to be safe I'm going to keep an eye on it with my device out of my not my fingers my fingers are not in there Gonna come over here and start over here so it's going to take a couple of travel stitches here so that it can work its way back up to here and come down the other way and the reason I do it that way if you watch my other videos is some fabric has um, some give to it and it can sometimes actually cause uh, the fullness to happen underneath and if we're gonna and it could end up causing a pleat if we're going to get a pleat, I'd rather it be down at the bottom of the bag where it's more easily going to be hidden in the seam allowance than up by the zipper. So this is going to do a couple of travel stitches and then it's going to come up here. And again, we want it to move over here because if it had stopped here and then gone all the way over here, it might have got caught in our seam allowance, or I mean our zipper, got caught on our hang hardware. Okay, so now it's going to come down here and I want to keep an eye on it. Sorry, oh, dog scared me. Woo. Okay, that worked out okay. Hold on a second. I got a little pleat there. here and do the same thing come to the outside and that second level of stitching um, for vinyl is important because sometimes what happens is the uh, stitching will show in your vinyl and if you put another layer of stitches just to the outside it'll help um, take the stress off the seam Okay, we're not gonna run step 14. So step 14 comes here. So if you're on a multi-needle, you need to put a stop at 13. Um, the reason why we have this is if it went to uh, most machines when the design is over, it comes back into the center of the bag. And we don't want that because we don't know if there's gonna be any hardware or anything in that it could get stuck on. So we're all done now. So before we unhoop though, let me move the hoop out of the way. We wanna look at the back and make sure nothing got messed up. Because if it did, we can still fix it. But it didn't. Ooh, my thread really got wonky here. But otherwise, it looks okay. So now we can go ahead and unhoop it. Remove all the tape and unhoop it. So carefully remove the um, tear away. If you don't get it all out, that's fine. It's just going to be in the seam allowance. But see how that tear away prevented um, the machine from getting stuck on that? It creates like a, a temporary bridge or dam I'm not sure which one it would be a bridge I think oh I'm gonna use my scissors here because these stitches here it's wanting to get stuck because it doubled over on me 
the chalk startled me. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was funny. Okay. You don't need to worry about these basting stitches if those pull out. So now go ahead and remove all the tape. Save whatever tape you can reuse if you can. And you see I, I measured way too long on this one. But I'd rather it be a little too long than not enough for you guys. So it's easier to remove the tape while the hoop is still, project is still hooped because you have a little bit of tension on it. All right, I think I got it all out from the front. And I'm just removing tape. And you may not be able to see me, but that's all I'm doing is removing tape from the back of the hoop. And for closing, I like to just use um, the Fabri-Tac or 3-in-1 by Beacon. Again, not a sponsor. Uh, just what I use. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure it's flipped upside down right now because my bottle's getting a little low and doesn't like to come out. All right, so we're going to go ahead and unhoop. I like to save my uh, scraps of the... Um, poly mesh. I use that when I'm doing an applique bag to support the applique stitches. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut this close to the vinyl. I hold the fabric out of the way and then I just cut it. And then I have all these little strips that are just sitting around. And then when I need something to support, give some extra support to satin stitching, I can just grab a little seam strip and throw it under there. This is like one of the first times I haven't been using the, I usually have been only using the Unicorn Main variegated thread from Wizardry, Stitchery and Crafts. I love that stuff. I use it for almost all my bags because I use so much rainbow stuff. I love rainbows. Um, totally. I've li loved them since I was a little girl. And um, just anything colorful. I'm not a neutrals person in any stretch of the means. Although my living room, I did paint gray, but I'm not sure how much you know about art, but gray is actually a really good neutral to show off colors. It's, instead of white, you don't want white. You want a nice, like a blue toned gray. So that's why I do it because I have a lot of artwork that's colorful. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, oops, I missed the bottom, is we're gonna cut our lining so we know where we don't wanna cut the lining short. We wanna keep a, an extra, a little extra bit, it just helps to close off the bag. So here's our opening right here. So I'm just gonna come in at an angle, 45 degree angle to that opening on either side. And then I know I don't wanna cut this piece of the lining off. So then you can go ahead and flip to the other side and you wanna just cut to about a quarter inch seam allowance. And then the bottom, you don't wanna cut, you're not gonna be cutting into your vinyl. You're only cutting your lining on the bottom. And then you're gonna come up on the sides and follow along at a quarter inch. I know a lot of people take an eighth of an inch on con, but that scares me. You can probably get away with it on this bag because of the extra stitching, but it scares me. Um, I'm actually gonna cut this big thick piece off because I could probably use that for strap connectors. It scares me to get that close with a cotton woven because it could fray and then come out of your seam. So I don't do an eighth of an inch with cotton. Okay, back we go. And start over here. In an ideal world, you would fold your lining back and get the lighter and burn off your zipper and melt that zipper end, but I don't have the lighter handy. OK, 
Okay, and then here's where our cut is. So we wanna make sure we don't cut into that. So bring up your lining and just trim that quarter inch up to that. All right. I didn't do a very good job right here, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut that a little bit more. Okay, now this is the important part. Let me trim off this top. If you have any scraps that are good enough to still use, like I did that big piece, save it. If not, toss everything. Okay, and then you can trim off this little corner here and here and just kind of taper it down. And then I'll help that corner come out a little bit more. Don't cut into your stitching, just cut, kind of cut it off. But this is the really important part. We want to notch the bottom here because it's curved. If we don't notch it, then that vinyl will bulge, try to fold up on itself to fit inside the seam and it won't smooth out. So by notching it, we're gonna allow that vinyl when it folds out into the seam allowance to spread out and it won't be bulged on top of each other. So it's very important that you notch these corners. Anytime you have a rounded corner, you wanna put some notches in it. Alternatively, you could use pinking shears. Um, my pinking shears won't go through the thick vinyl though. But if you're doing cotton woven, it would be fine. So you just need it right there along that um, sharp edge. You can actually put it along, there's a slight curve all the way up here. So you can put a few notches in on the sides as well. And that'll help ease it a little bit on the more subtle curve that's going up the bag. There you can probably go like half an inch to an inch apart. But down at the bottom you wanna do about a quarter inch apart. Now I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Remember, you're not cutting into your stitches. You just want to trim out the excess, especially vinyl, because it's so thick. I'm pretty impressed my machine made it through all those layers. I was afraid I was going to have to get the 100 needle out. I'm just gonna put a couple up here. And yes, this does give me a little bit of angst because you're cutting into the lining too, and so then we get into that. There's not enough seam allowance. But again, I have that double row of stitching here, so I'm not too worried about it. If you have tearaway um, stabilizer, this is the time you can actually remove the tearaway in between the bag. Oh, I cut off this strap connector. I wasn't paying attention. Don't cut off your strap connector even to the bag seam allowance. Leave it about a half an inch wider because it takes a lot of weight when you're um, pulling on the bag and stuff. And if you take and cut it off um, short, there's no um, extra weight there. Uh, there's nothing to help give it any extra support. So if you leave it long, it basically creates a cantilever effect in the bag. So if you, if I hadn't cut it off too short, you would see it would stick it out here. Then it, there'd be room for, as the stress of the seam is coming up and down, the fabric would be in here. So it would be able to help offset that stress there. Otherwise what happens is over time, that seam will actually come undone. Okay, so now if you see here, our stabilizer is right inside. So if you're using tearaway, you could easily take that out and remove it. But we're not using tearaway, so we're just gonna leave it. So here's our opening. And I'll try and stay in the camera, but it's really hard to do that when I'm turning the bag. So we're gonna just reach inside here and start at one of the corners. Usually I find if you get one corner through, then the rest of the bag will just come through easily. And the smaller bags, it's hard, I'm not gonna lie. This is, bag is bigger, so I, it's got a nice big turning hole. But on the smaller bags, it's gonna be a little bit tighter, so you need to be mindful of what materials you're using for the bags. And hopefully you're watching this video before you do try to stitch this out and maybe daring the stitch out because otherwise you miss it. I do have a lot of warnings and gotchas in the PDF um, as much as I can, almost too much probably but I try to account for everything I can. But that requires for people to read it, and sometimes people don't read it. 
Okay, so I'm all the way out to the lining side almost. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of push around and get all my lining pushed out as much as I can um, before I close it up. I just find, I could be totally wrong there, but I find it just helps. And you see there's, a, you can see the pleat here. That's what we expect to see. There is a pleat. That's what forms our gusset. Okay, so now for the closing of the bag. Um, this bag doesn't have that bulky edge to fold against like we do with most of the bags. So what you wanna do is just get your, um, see how you follow the seam across and press this and then do the same thing down here and press it. And then just kind of, um, you can hand sew this would be really good, do a blind stitch, but then you wanna just kind of glue it together or use your favorite hem tape or whatever. So I just like to get some clips I bought those pretty glittery ones from Mormino, but I don't know where you put them, so. And then I'm gonna just go ahead and run a bead of glue across my seam. If I can get it to come out. And just do a small bit at a time, and then push the seams together and then put your clip on. It's actually much easier to do this than when it's on the bag, the other kind of bag. Okay, and then go ahead and come back over here. Make sure you have your hems together like that. Because this is part of the pleat, so I don't wanna sew it like that. You need to make sure, push that pleat back out of your way. Make sure you're only getting that piece of the hem. And then. Go ahead and put your glue. And then push your binder clips together. And usually by the time um, you get the end done, the middle is, or the first part is already dry. It dries about 60 seconds is what it takes to set up and then it fully cures, I believe in 24 hours. Always put the lid on that tight and don't let it, don't let it um, overflow onto any surface. You can see I actually have a little thing here when it, it some of it got on my machine and damaged the surface. Okay, while, that, while we're waiting for that, we can go ahead and push our zipper pull and finish up and in our bag all the way. And if your vinyl's trying to stick together inside, just kind of reach in there and push it up apart so you can get the zipper opened. should be dry now enough to turn the bag right side out okay you see how we didn't get our pleat caught in there we just did the hem and now let's turn the bag to the right side so now forming the pleats is a little bit different on this bag than on the regular flat bottom girl. The regular flat bottom girl is totally flat on the bottom and square. So it's kind of easy to push your fingers in and get a little triangle um, formation. Look, I missed a thread. But this bag is a little bit different than that. So it's not quite as easy to do that. So go ahead and use your favorite turning device. Oh, I just lost, what did I do with my new thing? I have that precision tool that's so nice that I lost it, so. Anyway, use your favorite turning device to pop up your zipper 
on either end. Be careful not to poke through the vinyl or through the zipper though, but just kind of pop it up into the seam so it's up. And it's a curved seam at the top, so keep in mind. And then here you see how this all bunches up here. Just push down, push it into the seam, and then push around and pull the zipper out. It's a little easier to do on the square ones. This one's a rectangle. But once you close it a few times, it'll kind of get it, it trained in there. And you see how much you need to push out or not. Let's see. Okay, now let's finish pushing out the set the bot inside. So work towards the bottom first. You see you there. You see how our little pleat is starting and then push out the sides and this is a good time to rub the um the seam tool inside here and push the seam out all the way on the sides because it's a curved seam and you can run it between your fingers like this as well you see how that's curved and we're going to do the same thing over here Run your fingers against the seam inside or use your device here to do that. So I pulled this out, just pulled this little bleed out so you can get your side seam out. And when you're inside, you can kind of feel where that gusset ends. And then you know you have the curved side pressed out enough. Just run it between your fingers. All right, now, the bottom is going to be a little bit more like a dart so you just want to make sure it looks even across both sides but it's not going to form a triangle like our flat bottom girl does because it's curved so it's more going to look like a dart so you just want to kind of work it from inside until it looks pretty even on both sides and then you can see how here it's about evenly across. So this is what it's gonna look like. It's got a 3D look, and this is what it's supposed to look like. It's not gonna be flat. So just work it out until you get the final look that you like. And it has like a little dimple look. And then let's close it up. And there we go. How cute is that? I hope you guys like this. Um, I just think it's so cute and it's very spacious inside. So this is gonna be a great makeup bag, very spacious inside. And you can just work it if you want a little bit wider or, long, or not. And you can kind of see how this is even across here. And then when it sits down and the same in the back, and then you know it's even, that the gussets are pushed out evenly. But there it is. I hope you guys like this. If you do like my videos, please consider subscribing. Even if you don't buy my patterns and you just need some doll voice to hear in the background while you're working, there you go. Um, oh, I'm so pleased with how this turned out. I was really worried I wouldn't make it with this thicker vinyl, but um, so cute. Very cute, I think. <laughs> okay, guys, uh, have a good day.